Hi everyone, um, today we're going to be talking about redesigning TransLink's digital experience. And I'm Rachel, I'm a product designer and content creator from Nigeria, and I moved over here to do my master's in user experience and service design. I'm absolutely excited and passionate about building and crafting experiences that are very good for users, and I'm a lifelong learner, and I'm just very, very excited about experimenting with things. Hi everyone, I am Mamina, I am a storyteller storyteller and experience designer from Nepal. I am very interested in user research and in designing co-design experiences. Today, Rachel and I are going to present our little project on TransLink and we ask for your patience and support as we present some of our research findings as well as our final prototype for the redesign for TransLink. All right, just before we get into things, um, let's do like a quick survey. Um, let's have a show of hands if you've ever used the TransLink app. Understandable. Okay, good. And let's hope that nobody from TransLink is here <laughs> so that everyone can be honest. Um, if you love the experience on the TransLink app. <laughs> That's okay. If you do not like the experience on the TransLink app and you think it can be way better than it is right now, show of hands. Okay, fair enough. And as you can tell, this is something that resonates with everyone in the room. And for me, it was just really personal. I just moved here from Nigeria to the UK. I was dealing with the weather changes. I mean, 30 degrees Nigeria to two degrees, four degrees, come on. I was dealing with all of that and I'd gone to use the vending machine and I'd slot in my cash and I could hear the sound of the coins and I could also hear that voice that said, please take your change. And I was just really excited. I was like, whoa, this is UX. This is UX. This is a reminder for me to take my change. And I could hear like the sound of the coins and I was just really excited. I was like, wow, this is such a good platform. And you can imagine how my experience went from 100 to zero when I tried to use the digital platform. I just downloaded the app and I just struggled to find what app to download and how to even find the app to even buy me like a ticket. And unfortunately that day, I was also on the emotional roller coaster. I taken the wrong bus from, instead of taking the bus going right, I taken the ones going left to G bus. And I'd ended up in Jodhastan at night and it was just really cold and I just really wanted to get home. Rachel's experience, as we saw from the crowd here today as well, is not hers alone. In my own personal exploration of Belfast and Northern mm -hmm. Ireland, I was also similarly lost and confused. And based on our personal experience and whenever we started this project, upon talking to more people and finding out that old and new users of TransLink were similarly confused, we decided to, to take on this project. Yeah, and we just had one simple problem statement. How can we improve the user experience on the current MLink app? And at the start of our project, we sort of started with understanding the condition of the physical infrastructure that's actually present in the country. We sort of looked at different resources available to understand what was the transport infrastructure like in the country. And we found out a very clear disparity in the east and west of the country of how transport services are managed and implemented. And this also uh, showed us different uh, data regarding the reliance on like privately owned vehicles is very high because there is no infrastructure in the first place. And earlier last year, whenever we were working on this project, we also found out that TransLink was actually championing a lot of uh, different aspects related to sustainable development goals and also climate change and climate impact. Derry is actually the first city uh, in the UK and Ireland to have a fully zero emission fleet. And uh, TransLink, as some of us might have seen publicly, they also have a lot of billboards and public announcements about their uh, efforts in reducing their carbon footprint and impact. So this was one of the important findings that we found out during our research. And since this was already an existing app, we started off with an audit, an interface inventory, and just heuristic evaluation of this app. We just wanted to find out what exactly were the usability issues, and you can imagine we found a lot. So first of all, the logo has not been updated. 
TransLink logo has been updated for about three years now, and we still have the old logo up on the app. That's very confusing for users. It was also different fonts, different colors, a very confusing color scheme. The different fonts, we had serif, serif, all in the same page, different type of serifs, different type of sans serifs, and it was just, everything was just everywhere, and we just could not figure out, okay, how are we exactly going to streamline all of this? Obviously, we did also an interface inventory where we wanted to sort of categorize what kind of buttons were on the app and how these buttons were used. And we found out that these buttons, even though they were telling the same thing, had different colors, different shapes, and different sizes. So a button could be telling you buy now in one place, and in another place, it could also be telling you buy now, but it was different colors and different shapes. And again, that was really confusing for users. And during our research, we also looked at different public transport services available not just in Northern Ireland, but all across the UK. We made use of different services available all across the United Kingdom and also talked to people in England, Scotland and Wales to sort of find out what kind of public service uh, situation is available for them for transportation from one place to another. This was very handy for us during our research as we were able to not just use the different types of services ourselves, but also sort of compare the digital experience in all of these apps and services available across the country. And during our research, as uh, I previously mentioned, we also looked at all the different types of apps available and we sort of uh, used all of these apps and uh, rated them based on their usability, accessibility, the brand's focus on sustainability, as well as gathering uh, like actual reviews from users who are actually using all of these apps and finding out how they feel about it. We sort of, uh, we did this to identify what features users have found helpful and what we could actually implement in our redesign for TransLink. So we started off also with surveys. We wanted to find out what um, people knew about the app and what their experience was on the app so far. So this was like demographic from our survey, the highest people survey within the age of 18 to 24 and 25 to 35. And we also wanted to know um, what sort of transportation they were using um, in terms of like public transport, how are they using public transport, and also to find out how do exactly they were planning their journeys. So we realized user planned their journeys in different ways, but it was not exactly a simple process. It was the use of multiple apps. They had to use Google Map or the Translink Journey Planner to first of all plan the journey. What time is the bus coming? What type of bus do I have to take? Where do I have to take the bus? Then in order to make payments, they had to use the MLIC app to make payments or they make payments at bus or at stations. Um, we also um, interviewed different users. Apart from the survey, we actually went around and talked to different people to find out about their experiences with MLink app. And we found out that people were not just confused about features in the app, but also were confused about what app am I actually supposed to download? If I go to Play Store, or App Store, I get different options. I actually don't know which is the right one. And we also found out from different users that uh, they were confused about features related to if I need to check the schedule for the bus or the train today, I actually go on the app and it sends me to the website where I have to search the whole thing again. So there was a lot of confusion, not just with uh, features in the app, but also about the app itself. And in our uh, in-person interviews, we also talked with some different user groups and we found out that some autistic users actually found it so helpful that there was an app which helped uh, ease their anxiety in actually commuting, which we thought was a very good example of how technology can be of help for all users. We're also very fortunate to speak to a driver in TransLink who has been working on TransLink for the past 18 years. So with somebody that had like a long experience of dealing with um, passengers and she obviously told us about, she was very great to share experience with us and she shared with us how frustrated users were or passengers were whenever they came on the bus and they could not exactly find what ticket to buy, what type of ticket to buy, where to buy the ticket, their ticket was missing and just a whole lot of different things that they just had to share with them. Obviously there was nothing she could do. And we also decided to, um, we also outlined user personas and from one of our user personas, we built up a user journey. So basically outlining the service and the entire flow from start to finish. What exactly, what are the questions that users ask whenever they want to take public transport? Um, questions like, 
what type of bus do I take? What bus do I take? Do I take the pink one? Do I take the purple one? Do I take metro? What is the metro bus exactly? What exactly is the glider? Just different questions that they, that they had. And we just wanted to sort of plan out how the journey would go from start to finish. And as Rachel mentioned, making use of our different uh, user personas and the, and the user journey map, we built like a storyboard and moved on into building wireframes. We actually divided up different pages amongst ourselves and decided that we'd work on different elements of the app from icons to the page layout to different screens separately and sort of come together and do multiple rounds of feedback as we progressed. This was uh, this is an image of certain sketches that we sort of started with at the start. And we moved on into building like mid-fi wireframes and hi-fi wireframes. The basically our main focus, as Rachel mentioned, throughout this whole project was making sure that we send users from their current location to their destination easily. And we wanted if we wanted the Mlink app to be a one-stop solution where users could plan their journey and check their schedule and buy the ticket all in one platform instead of having to switch from one place to another and do it with ease in one platform. Also, uh, we quickly want to mention that since the last time we this, did this project, TransLink has updated their app and there have been some changes. So some screenshots in the following slides will be different than what the app looks like right now. So that's like a public disclaimer for you straight away, but yeah. So these are some of the final hi-fi screens that we came up with. There's a little, um, you can see this more clearly in future slides, so just a quick run through. Yeah, so there you go. These are some of the internal screens where users can sort of see what kind of ticket that they are supposed to get, what kind of bus they're supposed to get, how much carbon footprint have they reduced by actually taking public transport. So this was actually some of the screens that we came up with. And here, this in this screen, we have sort of highlighted some features that we have repeatedly mentioned in this presentation already today, like checking the schedule. Right now, we can't really do that on the app. So we've designed a whole new screen where people can actually check the schedule of the bus that they need to take. There's also a service description page that we have added on the app where people can actually get the detail about what is the service. Like, you can't expect somebody new or someone random to actually know what is a metro bus service, what is a glider, what is a Ulster bus, and what is the train. So that's like a screen that we have added to sort of show all the services that are available within TransLink. Um, also, something that was really very confusing for me personally was this screen, this the city here. zone, inner zone, extended zone. Where does that start and where does that end? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> Literally no one. <laughs> so we redesigned that to actually show you, um, based on what you had imputed into your journey planner, we would recommend a ticket for you saying, oh, based on your journey from Bangor to Belfast, <laughs> these are the tickets recommendation we think you should take. We'd also recommend a single ticket, a daily ticket, weekly ticket, just depending on that. We also wanted to teach you about the zones because we thought it was just important to not just know that there was a zone, but where does this zone start and end? So once you click on the C zone button, it shows you just how wide the zone is and where it starts and where exactly it covers. So you exactly know where your trip starts and you know if you should just get an inner zone ticket or an extended zone ticket. We are, this, this particular page, <laughs> yeah. when I first started using the app, I got on this page and I was like, nope, there is no way I'm imprinting my card in that. That doesn't look safe. <laughs> Too scary. So I decided to use Apple Pay, and I still do till now. And we decided to also redesign this page to so exactly um, the different types of payments that you could use. And one very thin, we also decided to um, emphasize was the fact that you could actually be saving the planet by using the public transportation. Um, TransLink is very big on showing how they are reducing carbon footprint. So it was very important for us to show that. So every time you use the bus, um, that would always come up. 
Um, testing. So within our cells, we would always have internal testing where we would give each other feedback yeah. on um, what part of the project we're exactly working on. We also had um, different supervisors. So we had um, questions and feedback sessions with them. And we had finished like our redesign and it was finally time to test with um, audiences Actual and users. users yeah. And this was like the scary part because we didn't exactly know what the feedback was going to be like. Um, when like it or no? And it was good that we got very good feedback. I tested in person, yep. but we now had some testing sessions online. Right. And I remember testing with somebody and she was like, is this going to be implemented right after? And I'm like, we wish. <laughs> 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 and um, it was just very good um, testing with people and hearing what they had to say about it. And also for them to give us feedback on what they thought about it and what we could implement and what could be better. And based on some of the user testing responses that we gathered, not just in person and online, we sort of also tried to address some of the issues that people mentioned to us. And before doing that, we actually calculated system usability scores based on all the feedback that we got from our actual real life users. We actually calculated like the overall rating for our new redesign and got some scores tallied up. And based on the feedback that we got from actual users who tested our redesign, we actually, before actually submitting our final <laughs> project, we were like, oh, should we actually make these changes and show it in the final show instead of like not doing anything up with the results? So some feedback that we got was uh, like here in this side of the screen, you can see that the bus stop icon was different before we changed it from the bus icon to a bus stop icon. Like little changes like that based on actual user feedback, we tried to implement all of that. We sort of added this description of the service page, which we had mentioned before, after our user tests were completed, people were like, I actually don't know what is a Metro bus, so can you help me with that? So we added that service description page after we got this response from our user test. Um, obviously, there were a lot of constraints and um, we obviously did like a lot of reflection after the project yeah. and um, just among ourselves, um, working as a team with two designers and we obviously knew we had different weaknesses and different strengths as designers and I'm super glad to have Mamina as a partner to work on this project with and we're just great to see how we could sort of play up our strengths and just be patient with each other and just compromise on things. Um, we also had different supervisors and it was good that we had different supervisors based on um, what exactly our strengths was and we all, always gave feedback to each other on whatever project we were working on that particular time. Um, we also did consider, um, oh, we should also mention that it was really hard for us to sort of streamline our processes because we um, wanted to do everything exactly at once. <laughs> we had very limited time we were like three weeks away from the deadline and we want to do this we want to do that and we constantly had to remind ourselves yes. from point a to, to point b. b that's it that's that's it. all no add-on no nope. no more user cases yes the user needs to go to somewhere else no nope. but we need to take the user from point a to point that's b it. And that is something as designers we probably struggle with because we wanted to solve everything. Yeah. So sort of narrowing down the scope to say the user needs to go from point A to point B, case closed. Yeah. And I want to add on like some reflections that we did <clears throat> during this project in terms of like there are some services in TransLink, which I personally think is very fascinating, like the smart travel card that we get where we can purchase a certain number of journeys and then just purchase more journeys, which is a little bit budget friendly than buying single use tickets, right? So some services like that, which are existing on TransLink are only partially digitized. You can buy like a multi-journey multi card, but to go top, to have to purchase a top up, you have to go in person and then be like, can I purchase 20 more journeys in my card? So, you know, like partially digitized services like that is also causing like a bit of divide between users actually wanting to use the public transport service. And some, uh, one thing interesting that we actually found out was in the app right now, if you buy a ticket, the next time you open the app, it will show you like recently purchased tickets. So you sort of just close your eyes and we tap, yeah, I just want that ticket. So it's like use of habit. We are like creatures of habit, all of us. Whatever we do, if we don't make any changes, we'll keep doing it over and over and over again. So I think we found that during our research, this was maybe the case as well. People are so used to the way the app is right now. There's no any thought process going on behind actually upgrading it to something better that I think a lot of us in this room agree that it could be. So that was one thing that we reflected upon while doing our project. 
And that's us, <laughs> closer to midnight, whenever we were ready to sort of wrap up everything and be like, okay, this is it. We are exiting this Figma file today and not looking <laughs> at it. That's it, that's us giving up. Close to midnight, that's us wrapping up this project after all rounds of feedbacks and reflection among ourselves. I think the next is the actual final show that we want to show today. <laughs> yes, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully we'll play. Oh, thank you. Could you do full screen? That's the new onboarding screen. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so that's you logging in as a new user onto the app. Or fake data. That's a notification pop up. You can use the map, yes. <laughs> notification. Yeah, plan your schedule, your journey. Look at what it's going to look like. Buy a ticket. See how wide this zone is? If it's an extended zone. Different options for a ticket based on how many times you travel or whatever you need. Easy to pay, less scary. You see how much carbon footprint you do? do, do? That's your ticket. That's it. And you can also track your journey as you go along in the bus. And I think this is us. If it, oh, 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 no, no, no. Next page. <laughs> yes, do you mind switching it for me, please? Yes, oh, that's yeah. us. That's us. Thank you so much <laughs> for your time. Thank you. All right, uh, I'm going to be specific here. Do we have any questions about that and not just complaining about TransLink? Because <laughs> yes. that one I can do all day, you know. <laughs> questions? Oh, go. Oh, some hands. You. Have you spoke to TransLink yes. about your idea? Um, actually, we were able to work with uh, the marketing agency that TransLink worked with, Ardmore Advertising, if anyone's here from there. But we were able to work closely with them during... Uh, the project, project and we actually presented uh, our project to them and we were actually very close to getting an appointment with TransLink but they backed out after Christmas so we are so if everybody so could get on Twitter you um, <laughs> sorry X the artist formerly known um, and tweet them be like we actually want our lives to be made better yeah. here's how um, sorry I love this um, anyone else other hands Okay, so oh yeah, great. Hang on, I'm gonna walk up here. In the meantime, I'll just say the most revolutionary idea in that <laughs> that apparently is absolutely nonsense to TransLink is an actual map. <laughs> Why does it not exist? They will not actually show you where a bus stop is. I hate TransLink. <laughs> Hi, didn't you hear? Sorry, where was it? Where were we? There we go. Hi, so I just wonder how many users you had in the user interviews and how you conducted the research. Yeah, the survey. Um, so for the survey, we had about 38 responses from our survey and... Um, in person interviews, we actually did like, I don't know, 10 ones. each. Yeah. It was online or in person. Yeah. So we gathered data from about like a rough size of 50 different audiences. And we tried to do a mixed bag of just not online, but also in person, in actually person. talking to people yeah. and gathering. So I basically data. just walked up to random people at uni. uni. At uni. Yeah, yeah, and just said, will you test this for me, please? And yeah. he just did. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Going once? OK. Thank you so much. I think we were all uh, absolutely on board <laughs> with the redesign. Like, why is there even a different app for when it's coming versus buying tickets? <laughs> I've been laughed at for having two TransLink apps on my phone. It's like, well, tell them that. Yeah. Real passion point for me. Well done, folks.